This is Daniel Scher, MD, Head of Clinical Affairs at SI Bone, presenting on behalf of the Insight Study Group. SI joint dysfunction is an accepted cause of chronic low back pain. There is substantial evidence from the clinical literature using both normal volunteers and affected patients to support the SI joint as a valid source of pain. Non-surgical treatment of SI joint pain is commonly provided, but it commonly fails to relieve pain and dysfunction. Open SI joint fusion was first reported in the 1920s. However, it is now no longer commonly performed due to long recovery times and variable satisfaction rates. Recently, devices for minimally invasive SI joint fusion have become available. Does minimally invasive SI joint fusion have clinical value? If so, where does it fit in surgeon's surgical armamentarium? To answer these questions, we conducted INSIGHT, a prospective multicenter randomized controlled trial. 19 centers in the U.S. enrolled 148 patients between January 2013 and May 2014. The trial was sponsored by the surgical devices manufacturer, SI Bone. In INSIGHT, Eligible subjects were randomized in a 2 to 1 ratio to receive either minimally invasive SI joint fusion or non-surgical management. Non-surgical management consisted of medication optimization, physical therapy, SI joint steroid injections, and RF ablation, delivered in a serial fashion according to patient needs for pain control. What was the rationale for the study's control group? When the trial was designed in 2012, open surgical fusion was being performed by only a small number of surgeons. Different techniques were in use, which would introduce heterogeneity. Satisfaction rates were variable. Most importantly, interested surgeons did not have equipoise. Surgeons who performed minimally invasive SI joint fusion no longer performed open SI joint fusion. We therefore chose non-surgical management as a control group. Non-surgical management is, of course, commonly delivered in the non-surgical physician community, including pain medications and physical therapy. There was moderate evidence to support SI joint steroid injections, and there were two blinded, randomized trials of RF ablation that supported safety and effectiveness. However, effectiveness was limited in duration. The INSIGHT trial was therefore a surgery versus best available non-surgical treatment study, and as such delivers high-quality, real-world evidence of the value of this surgical treatment. Eligible patients had to be aged 21 to 70, with SI joint pain diagnosed using a commonly used algorithm. They had to have SI joint pain with a positive Fortin finger test. They had to have typical pain elicited with performing at least three physical examination maneuvers that stress the SI joint. They had to have at least a 50% acute reduction in SI joint pain after an anesthetic joint block performed within the past three months. They also had to have an Oswestry Disability Index score of at least 30 and a visual analog SI joint pain score of at least 50 on the 0 to 100 scale. Patients were excluded for a variety of reasons, including severe competitive spine or hip pain, inflammatory sacroiliitis, and other conditions. A full listing of exclusion criteria is provided in the study report. Eligible patients were randomized in a 2 to 1 fashion to either SI joint fusion or non-surgical management. The trial allowed patients in the non-surgical management group to cross over to surgical treatment after the 6-month visit was complete. By avoiding early crossover, the 6-month analyses allowed unbiased direct comparisons of safety and effectiveness of the two treatments. The study's primary endpoint was a success-failure composite. To be a success, subjects had to report a reduction in VAS SI joint pain by at least 20 points and had to have no device-related serious adverse event, no neurologic worsening related to the SI joint, and no surgical re-intervention. Secondary endpoints included SI joint pain, Oswestry Disability Index, two quality-of-life measures, EQ5D and SF36, satisfaction, adverse events, and an as-yet unavailable two-year CT scan. One-year follow-up in the study was excellent, with 96% of fusion subjects and 87% of non-surgical management subjects having completed study visits. 
surgical parameters substantiated the minimally invasive nature of SI joint fusion. The procedure lasted on average less than one hour, and fluoroscopy time was minimal, blood loss was low, many patients were discharged the same day, and most were discharged by one day after surgery. This graph shows the difference in six-month success rates. As shown by the purple bar, the success rate in the SI joint fusion group was 81.4%, and the success rate in the non-surgical management group was 26.1%, a difference of 54.5%, which was highly statistically significant. The other colored bars show that the difference in success rate between surgical and non-surgical treatment was robust across a number of pre-planned subgroups. This graph shows mean VAS SI joint pain over time in the two groups. The green line shows a marked six-month pain reduction of 52 points in the surgical group and the blue line shows a small reduction of 12 points in the non-surgical group. The difference was statistically significant and clinically important. In the surgical group, the pain reduction was sustained at month 12. At six months, 35 subjects, or nearly 80% of those still participating, crossed over from non-surgical to surgical treatment and underwent the same minimally invasive SI joint fusion. As shown in the purple curve, these subjects experienced a very similar pain relief compared to those originally assigned to SI joint fusion. Nine subjects who had shown substantial improvement with non-surgical treatment did not cross over. Their mean SI joint pain had risen slightly, but not significantly, by 12 months. Oswestry Disability Index, a measure of dysfunction due to back pain, showed similar findings. By month six, ODI had improved by 27 points in the SI joint fusion group, as shown in the green line, versus only five points in the non-surgical group, as shown by the blue line. The difference was statistically significant. At six months, subjects in the non-surgical management group who crossed over, again shown in purple, experienced an improvement in ODI that was similar to that seen in subjects originally assigned to SI joint fusion. In contrast, those who did not cross over, shown in red, had experienced significant improvement in ODI at six months, but no further improvement at 12 months. The trial assessed quality of life using two measures. This figure shows the eight subdomains of SF36. In the surgical group, shown in green, all subdomains improved from baseline, shown with a solid line, to six and 12 month follow-up, shown in the green dashed and dotted lines. In contrast, there was no improvement in the non-surgical group, shown in blue, from baseline, the solid blue line, to six months, the dashed line. Investigators were asked to assess the occurrence of adverse events, defined as any negative change in health throughout the study. There were modest and statistically insignificant differences in overall event rates across the surgical and non-surgical groups. There was a low rate of device-related and procedure-related adverse events, and only one subject underwent an immediate revision for device-related neural impingement. The study's strengths include its prospective, multi-center, randomized design. Like many industry-sponsored studies, it was monitored and source-verified and executed against a clinical trial standard. We successfully avoided early crossover, which has marred interpretation of other surgery versus non-surgery trials. Importantly, the response in the crossover group, being similar to that observed in the group originally assigned to SI joint fusion, provided a validation of the surgical procedure. The high crossover rate, however, is a limitation of the study and prevents conclusions regarding the overall effect of non-surgical treatment at time points beyond month six. The study was not blinded and the study was industry sponsored. The INSIGHT study is very significant. For surgeons, it is important to prove the value of doing surgery versus not doing surgery, which this study provided. Surgery versus non-surgery studies are challenging to execute, especially in the post-market setting. Our study showed improvement in all clinical parameters measured, including pain, disability, and quality of life. Moreover, the surgical procedure had a reasonable safety profile. The INSIGHT study provides strong evidence that SI joint fusion is an acceptable treatment for chronic SI joint dysfunction 
and could be a part of surgeon's armamentarium. Questions to be answered by further follow-up include long-term pain and disability relief and radiographic findings assessed by the study's 24-month CT scan. These will be reported separately when the data become available. Please note that the device studied, iFuse Implant System, is FDA cleared for the following. The iFuse Implant System is intended for sacroiliac fusion for conditions including sacroiliac joint dysfunction that is a direct result of sacroiliac joint disruption and degenerative sacroiliitis. This includes conditions whose symptoms began during pregnancy or in the peripartum period and have persisted postpartum for more than six months. There are potential risks associated with the iFuse implant system. It may not be appropriate for all patients, and all patients may not benefit. For further information about risks, please visit the SI Bone website. Please also note that use of the device in other conditions is not on label and has not been investigated or reported. Please also note that some of the study authors are paid consultants to SI Bone, the device's manufacturer and study sponsor. All study authors conduct clinical research for SI Bone, and some of the study authors are SI Bone employees. Thank you for listening.